Bones are important. Bones hold us upright. The skull protects the most important organ in the body and yet the most delicate organ in the body, which is the brain. The only exposed bone in the whole body are teeth. Dentists make a fortune because so many people, their, their teeth are breaking down. I don't know whether um, you are familiar with the work of Dr. Weston Price. He's a dentist who in the 30s, he went all around the islands photographing people's teeth. Perfect teeth, perfect alignment. And then in some countries, only 10 years later, some of these islands, white man had come in with the devitalized food and he took more photographs. In fact, his whole book is just about photographs. And there the teeth started to be cramped because the people weren't getting the nutrition. So our bones need nutrition. Unfortunately, today there's a condition called osteoporosis, which is bones, they're breaking up far too young. You see, our bones should be strong till the day we die. So what I'd like to look at in this presentation on osteoporosis is what causes the deterioration of our bones and how we can strengthen our bones. There is a misconception today that bones are made of calcium, but bones are not made of calcium. Bones are made of a mineral balance. You see, calcium is called the king. And this is where the problem arises. I think this is where the misconception about calcium has happened. It's called the king because when calcium gets into the cell, all the other minerals piggyback on the back of calcium. So yes, he does deserve the title of king. But bones are not made of calcium. Bones are made of 12 minerals and 64 trace minerals. Let me show you. So the minerals that bones are made up of are boron and calcium. There certainly is some calcium in there, chromium and iron and magnesium and manganese and selenium and sulfur and silica, potassium, phosphorus and zinc. That's what bones are made of and 64 trace minerals. So the million dollar question is, where do we find such a thing? In his book, The Calcium Lie, Dr. Robert Thompson gives a very good illustration of this. He says, this is his view, he says, the clearest indication of a creator God is seawater. He said, you think about it. The rain comes down, it washes into the rivers. I, on my morning walk this morning, I was going by a fast river and we've had a lot of rain here in Vancouver. And the water was a milky colour. You know what the milk is? It's minerals, minerals that have been washed down from the heavy rains. And by the time the waterways get to the sea, it's a very salty taste because of the minerals. You see, in seawater, there are approximately 92 minerals. And the reason why Dr. Robert Thompson says that the sea water is the clearest indication of a creator God is because that mineral balance and proportion that you will find in seawater is what you'll find in your bones, is what you'll find in your blood, is what you'll find in every tissue of the body, the fluid that the brain swims in, the lymphatic fluid. It is all this same balance. And so common sense says to us, well, that's where we need to get our minerals from. That's where we'll get the minerals in the balance that the bones need. No, I don't suggest you drink seawater. We should be drinking pure water. But you can buy a salt called Celtic salt. And Celtic salt contains 82 minerals. Some are in such pico proportion in the 92 that when the evaporation of the water takes place, some are inevitably lost. But if you take the Celtic salt, you are getting the minerals that you need 
to strengthen your bones. All the minerals that you need are found there. Now there is another salt that is very similar and that's Himalayan. You, you might even have, it's also 82 minerals. It's just that the Celtic salt has three magnesiums and the Himalayan doesn't have that many magnesiums. And this explains why the Celtic salt is such a moist salt. A lot of people don't like it. They say it's too wet. I said, that's because of the three minerals. That's because of the three magnesiums. And it's magnesium that actually pulls the water inside the cells. So the Celtic salt is my favorite because of the three minerals. Celtic salt is my favorite because of the three magnesiums. If all you can get and all you have is the Himalayan salt, it certainly is sufficient because it has all of those minerals. So how do we strengthen our bones? Let's make a list of how we can strengthen our bones. One way to strengthen the bones is to have Celtic salt or Himalayan. Dr. Robert Thompson states that if you have a crystal of Celtic salt before every glass of water, and how much water should we be having? We should be having at least eight glasses a day. If you're Australian, that's a 250 mil glass, and if you're an American, it's an eight, eight, eight ounce glass. It certainly is the same amount. And I say here, at least, if you're working out in the garden and you're perspiring a lot, you need a little bit more. Celtic salt, Dr. Robert Thompson advises, a crystal before every glass. So that's eight times in a day. He says all you are doing is replacing the minerals that you lost yesterday. And one of the problems today with the minerals in our body is they're not being replaced because the food that we are eating doesn't have the minerals. You see, the soils are devitalized Many, many farmers aren't replacing the compost back into the soil to put back in the microbes, put back in the nutrients that were taken out by the last plant. And so that's why it's very important to have organic food because organic food feeds the soil and organic gardeners Feed the soil, ensuring that the microbes are in the soil and they're not putting the poisons on the soil which, will, which uh, contribute to the deterioration of the microbes that are in the soil. So organic food's very important. So let's get back to the question, where are we going to get these minerals from? We get our minerals from the sea salt. We also get our minerals from greens. Every day we should be eating dark green leafy vegetables. If you don't eat dark green leafy vegetables every day, and ideally they should be organic because organic food has a far higher nutrient content because of the microbes in the soil. Remember from one of our other lectures that it's the microbes in the soil that release the minerals out of the soil and put them into the plant. So if you're not having greens every day, you really should have green barley. You really should have a dose of something like um, wheatgrass or chlorophyll. So there's quite a few uh, available today. They have these minerals in their balanced form. That's what our bones need. So if you are on calcium supplements, my suggestion is that you stop your calcium supplements. Have you noticed in aged care? I've spoken to quite a few nurses who work in aged care and they say, everyone is on these great big calcium supplements and everyone has osteoporosis. It's not doing it. <laughs> it's not doing it because calcium taken in that form can actually harden the tissues. You see, calcium hardens cement. It doesn't harden bones. It can harden the tissues, it can harden the arteries, contributing to atherosclerosis. We should be taking nutrients into our body the way God put them into the, into the food. So it's very important to have your organic food as much as possible. At our health retreat, we are not 100% organic. It's very difficult to be 100% organic, but we do the best we can. We have a large garden and we have a lot of greens in our garden. 
So let me define the greens that are very high in these minerals. So you've got spinach and silver beet. Now you have something we don't have in Australia, collard greens. They're also very, very high. And remember when you cook them, it, you do not lose your minerals. The only way you could lose your minerals if you were to cook the vegetables and then throw the water away. Remember in the old days, women on their fuel stoves used to have a pot at the back and they'd put the tops from the turnips, they'd put the tops from the carrots, they'd put the ends from the carrots and that just boiled away slowly all day and then they'd strain it and they use that as their stock for their soups. You see, when a, when a, when a soup or a, a dish has a lot of minerals, that's high flavour. It's to the point now you can go into shops and buy stock cubes, can't you? But be careful because a lot of stock cubes have monosodium glutinate in them. And be careful because monosodium glutinate today can be caused natural, it can be called natural flavour enhancer. It can also be called uh, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, hydrogenated vegetable protein. Very important to become aware of the, the names of monosodium glutinate. Monosodium glutinate is a neurotoxin. It, it's also called an excitotoxin. It causes brain cells to overfire, and when they overfire, they, they deteriorate and die. So you don't want to go anywhere near, near, near those. So your organic food, your vegetables are the highest minerals, and of your vegetables, the highest is your greens. So we should be having dark green leafy vegetables every day. With my children, I used to always serve them the salad first. I didn't bring the potatoes on the table. I didn't bring the lentils on the table. I didn't bring the bread on the table. All that stayed in the kitchen until the salad was eaten because I found that most people will go for the lentils and the potatoes before they go for the salad. And I would always have a beautiful dressing. Maybe it's been made out of tahini and olive oil and lemon and garlic and the nice Celtic salts. You can make some beautiful dressings. So if people find that the leaves are a little tasteless, they can put some dressing on that. I remember my daughter Jessica had a girlfriend come for lunch one day and her girlfriend said to me, if my mother's salad tasted like this, I'd eat it. Now that tells me that a lot of salads are limp. They have no flavor because they're not organic. They haven't got the minerals in them. So make sure that the food tastes very good and is very, very fresh. So your organic food is high, your vegetables are the highest and the greens are highest. That's where you're going to get that full range of minerals that your bones require. One of the problems with bones today is people are taking things that are leaching these minerals out. One is caffeine. Caffeine has a very acid effect on the body. And what happens when acid-forming foods are taken into the body? Let's make a list of the acid-forming foods. So we're going to make a no here. These things should not go into the body. So caffeine and meat, whether it be white or red, dairy products, the only dairy product that probably is on a acid alkaline scale of neutral would be raw milk from an, an organic cow. But myself, I'm a fifth generation Australian Scottish descent. I, I can't handle the cow's milk very well. I acknowledge that there are some people who've got dairy in their heritage who can handle it. The problem is if you give the cow's milk that's in Today, the shop to a newborn baby that calf, that calf will die. Of DNA so there's a big difference between raw and deficiency. not raw. So your dairy products have an acid effect. Also, the hybridized wheat of today, it, it was hybridized in the 50s, went worldwide in the 70s. So by the 1990s, all the breads, the pastas, the cereals are all made out of the hybridized wheat. And the intensive crossbreeding that it went through created a very acid or created a wheat that leaves quite an acid residue. So all of these foods leave an acid effect in the body. 
Now, anything that leaves an acid effect in the body, it actually leaches calcium out. Let me explain. The most acidic substance is sulfuric acid, and the most alkaline substance is calcium. And when a person is having high caffeine, meat, dairy products, another couple are alcohol and tobacco. So when a person is taking all of these things in, it creates a very acid condition in the blood. Now, if that acid condition goes too, too low, you see our blood should be between uh, 7.35 and 7.4. Now, if it drops down to 7.22, that person will go into a coma and die of acidosis. So as soon as it starts to drop, because the person's having such a lot of acid-forming foods, the body says, we've got a crisis here. The lungs and the kidneys are trying very hard. They're two organs that are constantly keeping the acid-alkaline balance right. And because it's dropping so low, the body yells out, we've got to get our last resort buffer system. The calcium, the most alkaline mineral, is pulled out of its biggest storage house, which is the bones. It comes into the blood in a form of calcium phosphate, comes into the blood, neutralizes that acid condition, and then it goes back to uh, what it should be, and the person's safe, but now at a cost. Now we have free calcium excess floating through the blood. And the body says, now what are we going to do with this? So it dumps it on the bones as bone spurs. It dumps it in the joints as, ga as gout, arthritis. It dumps it in the kidneys, contributing to kidney stones, in the gallbladder, contributing to gallstones. And I'm sure we've heard of all of those things. And if a person goes to the doctor with a sore lump on their wrist, the doctor says, oh, that's a bone spur. And you might say, well, what is a bone spur? And he will say, it's a calcium deposit. So what's the next question? Because we always should have the questions on the tip of our tongue. Why has the body dumped it on my bone and not in my bones? Unless the doctor has studied nutrition, he may not know. And the beauty of castor oil do you remember Psalm 104 verse 14 that God gave herbs for the service of man? The beauty of castor oil is you can put castor oil on that bone spur and it'll break up the bone spur, but it will never break up your bone because that's what herbs do. They just work with the needs of the body. But it explains why people are getting bone spurs. It's because of the acid environment that these foods create, causing a leaching of calcium out of its storage house to negate that acid residue. So that is a big contributing factor to osteoporosis is having foods that create an acid environment in the body. And that's why there's a no there. If you want strong bones, basically these things have to stop. Number five. Another reason why many people have osteoporosis is there's a hormone factor. Unfortunately, many women in their teens, early 20s, took the contraceptive pill. Unfortunately, uh, some are still doing it. The pharmaceutical company does not want you to know the dangers of this contraceptive pill. And what the contraceptive pill does is it causes estrogen to rise and estrogen, as I mentioned in another lecture on hormones, we call it the good slave, bad master. It's not a good guide and progesterone is displaced. And progesterone is the hormone that balances estrogen and it goes down. Now the reason I'm mentioning this right now is because progesterone boosts bone building cells. Another name for bone building cells is osteo osteoblast. So osteo means bone and blast means new. So there are many women who were on the pill in their teens, in their 20s, maybe it was 30, 40 years ago, and now they're in their 50s, they find they've got osteoporosis. And when the hormones are checked, they find that they are lacking progesterone. 
So anyone who has osteoporosis should go on a natural hormone boosting cream. Hormone boosting cream to get the progesterone up because progesterone stimulates bone building cells. Often this is a missing link with osteoporosis. Now let me give you the truth on cow's milk. Cow's milk is high in calcium, but it is also high in protein. Here's a glass of milk. And that glass of milk is high in calcium and it's high in protein. And animal protein is very dirty burning fuel. That means only 58% is burnt as fuel. So what that does is that leaves a 42% waste. It is a very acid waste. It's actually a sulfur waste and the sulfur is a very acid mineral. So what the body does is it uses the calcium in the glass of milk to negate the acid residue from metabolizing the animal protein. You know how much calcium that leaves for the body? None. None. And that explains why the countries in this world that are the highest dairy consumers have the highest rate of osteoporosis. And as you can see, as we're going through this list, it's often not one thing. It may be a combination of quite a few things. And what's also is happening with some people, it may just be the hormones. With other people, it might just be the acid diet. So it also explains why we should be our own doctor investigating why these things are so. So understanding this, you will see that number six will be eliminate dairy. And how many people think they've got to drink cow's milk to get their calcium? But there are countries in this world that don't have cow's milk at all and they've got very strong bones. One is the Hunzas in the Himalayan mountains. I think the only, the only dairy they eat at all, if you can call it dairy, is a little sheep's yogurt. And that's not even every day. And they live till they're 120, 130. And the game polo came from the Hunzas. And sometimes the under 50s are playing the over 50s and sometimes people fall off their horses and broken bones are very rare because their bones are so strong. You see, up in those mountains, they grow food that's very, very high in minerals. The, the water is very high in minerals. It's well known that cow's milk does not strengthen your bones. It can actually weaken your bones in the process that I just explained. The very acid environment causing calcium to be taken out of the bones to, to negate the acid environment, little by little is leaching the bones and causing them to be weak. On top of that, you put the hormonal imbalance. So number five on the list should be a cream called the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. The Anna's Wild Yam Cream is a cream that is made out of wild yam, Mexican wild yam, and it is also has um, Vitex in it, which is a herb called chase tree that also helps to balance the hormones. So someone with osteoporosis should probably be on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream for at least a year. I meant a 92-year-old lady who was on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream to help with her osteoporosis. So number seven, many bones are getting weak because lack of exercise, lack of bone building strength exercises. So exercise should contain uh, strength, strength moves. So this could be weights, this could also be uh, push-ups. If someone can't do push-ups, I say do push-ups on the wall. If you're finding it hard, do it on your knees. You know those fit balls, you can actually put your body on the fit ball and do quite easy push-ups. And 
if you move the fit ball down, 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 right to your ankles, then the, the push-ups are getting a little bit harder. Remember that the Olympian athletes weren't just born fit. No one's just born fit. You've got to work at it. It is true. Some need to work at it a little bit more than others. But strength comes by exercise. There is actually no other way. When my, when my daughter turned 19, she wanted me to do a skydive with her for her birthday. And I actually love flying. My father was a pilot. And when I was 16, we used to go in the plane with him. We'd go up and down and up and down in these little planes. My husband says that's not allowed anymore. So I said, yeah, I'll do a skydive with you. I was 49. I didn't land quite right. <laughs> A little bit of wind blew us when we were just coming down and my foot went out and my foot landed first and I heard a loud pop. Anyway, I was on crutches for five or actually seven weeks I was on crutches until my foot healed. I think it was my talus bone that cracked. That's the bone that your tibia and fibula sit on because no x-ray showed a break but I certainly could not put any weight on it. My friend who's a vet, she said, we're smarter than doctors because we have to think for dumb animals. She said, I think what's happened to you is your talus bone has cracked. Anyway, I was on crutches for seven weeks and I would exercise. I would lay on my ground, on the ground and I'd have my legs in the air. I did not want to lose my fitness. But you know, my, my uh, calf muscle that wasn't taking any weight got a centimetre, that's about half an inch smaller than my, <laughs> than my, other, my other calf. Any part of the body, if you're not using it, it, it loses strength. So when you exercise, you're not just building muscle, you're also building bone. Now the biggest bones in the body are your femur and the biggest muscle mass are your, your quads here. And God made it like that so that when we lift things, we should lift with our bone, with our femur, and we should lift with our, with our quads. And the reason why many people don't is because they lose core strength. So when, when, you, when you bend and you lift, you're actually using these muscles here and your core strength. But when a person bends like that to lift, all the weight goes, goes on their lower back. And how many people have lower back problems? So when we lift, that, that back should never, ever bend at all. And if you can't bend down very low, do it every day and you will get lower and lower. I saw a photograph of a girl doing a yoga stand and she'd gone right over to the point that her head touched her knee and her back was straight the whole time. Why is her back so straight? Because of core strength. So exercise is absolutely vital. You see, we are training for something more important than the Olympic Games. We are training for life. Go into an aged care facility and have a look because if you live the way those people lived, you will be there. And I don't want to be in that chair, not able to move, not even able to tell anyone that I'd prefer to have carrots instead of potatoes, etc., etc. We've got to look after this body. We've got to give it the right conditions and it should maintain its strength right up until the day we die. So look after your bones. They need exercise and they need exercise every day. If you're not sure what strength exercises to be doing, you can go to a gym, you can get a personal trainer, can give you some guidelines depending on your age. And also start push-ups. If you can't do push-ups, do them on the wall. Everyone can do push-ups on the wall. And as you get stronger, go further out and further out. And then when you're quite a way out, then you can start going on the floor and, and start with your knees. Remember, muscle knows no age. No matter what your age, no matter what your size, exercise is important. Many bones are deteriorating because they have lost strength. So it's absolutely vital to exercise daily. Now in another lecture when I was talking about the heart, I talked about the high intensity interval training. And there's, a, there's an excellent um, 
excellent uh, presentation done by Dr. Doug McGuff in his book, Body by Science. And he shows that with the interval training, every time you do your interval training, and this will probably be about for about six, six sessions. So in that six sessions, that means you're doing six times 20 to 30 seconds high intensity. And you're also doing a recovery time of probably two minutes. You see, your fitness is not determined by how hard and fast you can go, but how long you take to recover. So this is the high intensity. And this is the recovery. And again, it's usually done for approximately six sessions. So what you can do is if you're a swimmer and if you're a runner, you definitely need to take some, you, you definitely need, need to do some different types so that you're doing your strength training. So the little dumbbells, the little weights, um, in gyms they have many different types of equipment that show it. Now let's, let's do the maths on that. That can be about 15 minutes a day. And everyone has got 15 minutes. Number eight. I'd like to specifically show the calcium foods. So we've already listed the Celtic salt has it in its nice balance. We've all also looked at the dark green leafy vegetables. But there are some other foods that are particularly high, and one is sesame seeds. They're phenomenally high. There's no other food that comes anywhere near sesame seed. Even a glass of milk doesn't come near. I think it's a, a glass of milk. It doesn't even have as much as a quarter of a cup of sesame seed. And the easiest way to take sesame seeds is as tahini. So tahini is basically sesame seed paste, and you can make some delicious dressings out of that. You can make some delicious desserts. My children used to ha love to have tahini and honey on toast after their meal. So that's a great way to increase your uh, calcium. The other is soy, and remember soy is only a problem if it's been genetically modified and grown with chemicals. So make sure it's uh, organic. And also uh, chickpeas. I think maybe some people call them cabanzos. So eating a balanced vegetarian diet, and as we've defined it in some other lectures, let's define the food. High fiber and the highest fiber is vegetables and the vegetables are the highest in minerals you see vegetables are high in fiber high in minerals low in sugars and as i've previously defined the greens very very high generous amounts of protein and the best protein again as i've shown you in the acid foods creating too much acid, causing calcium to be leached out of the bones, whereas vegetarian protein doesn't do that. So your vegetarian protein is your legumes, so that's lentils, chickpeas, lima beans, black-eyed beans, and also your some of your grains like buckwheat, especially your gluten-free grains. They're good sources. Quinoa, millet, and a very high protein one is amaranth. Nuts and seeds. Just don't overdo the nuts. We should be having, you know, my six foot six brother-in-law, maybe he can handle 12 nuts a meal. I'm a little lady, I might have eight nuts per meal. Just don't overdo the nuts. Seeds, you can eat a little bit more of them. Did you know pumpkin seeds is 40.8 grams of protein to one cup? Now we're not gonna eat a cup of pumpkin seeds, but um, a quarter of a cup of pumpkin seeds, that's gonna give you 10 grams of protein. That's a, a good protein source. So generous amounts of protein and healthy, f healthy fats. So with your fats, Again, your nuts and seeds, excellent forms of fats. 
and the two fats that can be freely eaten, meaning eaten as a free fat, is coconut, coconut oil and olive oil. We need a little bit of oil. I had a friend who stopped all oil and her skin dried out, her hands dried out. And people say, Barbara, what creams do you use? I say, I don't, I don't. But I, I eat olive oil every day. You know, our skin, our hair, our bones are all an illustration of the nutritional status in our body. And as you can see by my illustrations here, that some people might be eating a good source of these minerals, but at the same time, they're taking some acid things that are leaching them out. The other thing that can leach the minerals out is, is to be taking things like calcium supplements in an unbalanced form. When a person takes, so we'll say here, no calcium supplements, the money you save on the calcium supplements, you can spend on getting good quality salts, on getting organic fruits and vegetables. That's the best way to do it. Now, sometimes I've known people to take calcium and magnesium in a balanced form calcium citrate, magnesium citrate, they certainly are absorbable forms. But myself, as a nutritionist, I actually don't advocate that people do it. I say, spend your money on good quality salt, spend your money on good quality foods, organic foods, good quality oils, top quality proteins, nuts and seeds, that's where you spend your money. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food and stop taking the things into your body that are causing the leaching of the calcium to come out and start drinking more water and having the salt and start exercising daily and also make sure you are sleeping in those hours of power. So sleep. The best time to sleep is between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. Many people don't sleep well because they go to bed too late, because their eyes are being exposed to technology too late. We should stop the exposure to technology at the very latest around 8.30 so that our eyes and our brain have time to wind down you see, many people can't sleep because they've just finished watching a horror movie or they've just finished watching an action movie and their brain's just going very, very fast. You see, God meant it to be that when the sun goes down, everything starts to slow down, slow down. So if you can't sleep, the worst thing you can do is get up and put the computer on or put the television on and put the iPad on. If you can't sleep, that's a really good time to start memorizing, start memorizing scripture. A friend of mine from down south Alabama, she says, if you can't sleep, read your Bible. The devil doesn't want you to read that and he'll put you straight to sleep. <laughs> so, so you can try that one. But never put the technology on between these hours because when lights go on, the pineal gland stops releasing those hormones. When you sleep in these hours, it gives the body time to recharge. It gives the bones the, the ability to strengthen. And number 11 is trust. Our final law of health is trust in divine power. And there's a lovely proverb that tells you how it strengthens your bones. And you might be familiar with Proverbs chapter 3. I know a few songs have been written in it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto their own, into thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil, and it will be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. 